Hey everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome back to Summit. We're taking a look at the third Sunday of Advent. Rejoice! Yeah, you heard me. Rejoice! Again, I say rejoice! Why am I saying rejoice? Because this is where we spark the pink candle. Purple, purple, pink, purple. Why pink? Right? Purple is the sign of repentance. Right, that the color purple is supposed to remind us uh, to repent. Right, that's why we also see purple during the season of Lent. Right, so we see purple in the Advent wreath, purple, purple. But all of a sudden, week three, we press pause on the purple and we rejoice. It's called Gaudete. Okay, Latin for rejoice. Gaudete Sunday, rejoice, and we switch to pink really fast as a reminder. In the midst of our season of repenting and preparing for the coming Lord, we also can't lose sight of this. Is also a happy occasion. This is something we should be rejoicing about that God came to earth, that heaven came to earth to bring earth back to heaven, that God came to save us. And that is worthy of rejoicing. And that's why the, the, the central theme of these readings this week is, listen, okay, there is good news. In these dark times, there's still good news. In this first reading from Isaiah, you're going to hear about like this parched, dry land. It's like the land is even going to re respond. Like there's, there's going to be flowers in bloom. Like that, that nature is going to exalt the Creator. Okay, so Isaiah was writing to people at a really dark time. Okay, it was bad times in the kingdom, and people were you know people had, had a series of bad kings. The, the northern kingdom had been destroyed. It was it was just it was dark times. And here is Isaiah in the midst of these dark times saying, "But you know what? God's still with us." He's still with us and he's going to do something awesome. And it seems really bleak right now and really dead right now and really parched right now. But the river's coming, y'all. God's going to do something amazing. You just got to be patient. And that's what we hear from the second reading from James. Be patient. The same way a farmer has to be patient during the season after he sows the seed, he's waiting for the fruit. Okay. He's saying, but the fruit's going to come. Okay. The harvest is going to come. The seed's going to grow, but you got to be patient. Now, that's a great lesson for life. The book of James. If you've never read it before, five chapters, you read one chapter a day. It's really easy reading. It's really practical and super, super filled with wisdom, super wise. Okay. James gives us all these little nuggets. And it's a great example because even if you've never worked on a farm, even if you're not in agriculture, you can understand that a farmer needs to be patient. That there are seasons of growth. That there's a time to plant, there's a time to harvest, right? To be patient. That's what. Advent really forces us to be patient. All of us want to kind of spring forward, fast forward to Christmas. Most of us are listening to Christmas music before Advent even starts. But it is a great reminder our church gives us, hey, you know what? There's a season to everything in life, and we got to be patient. And even in the midst of seasons of repentance, we can't lose sight of the bigger picture. We still have to rejoice. And that's why our church says, pause, rejoice. In the midst of all this preparation and patience and planning, rejoice. Because God is coming. Because Jesus is coming, and this is really, really rejoice-worthy, okay? It's worthy of joy. That's why in this, in this gospel, John the Baptist is sitting in jail, and he sends his, his disciples out to Jesus. He says, hey, you're, you're the guy, right? Like, I'm, I'm in jail here. You're the guy. And Jesus says, go back and tell him, the deaf can hear, the blind can see, the dead are being raised. This is why we rejoice, that whether we are physically or spiritually blind, whether we are physically or spiritually dead because of sin, that God can heal us, that Jesus can transform that sin, that Jesus can save us, Jesus will save us. This is worthy of rejoicing. No matter where you are in your life right now, if you're close to the Lord, if you're far from Him, if you're walking with Him, if you're running from Him, if you're listening to Him, if you're, if you're plugging your ears, if you're searching for Him, or if you're closing your eyes, maybe if you're, just, if you're so filled right now in, in sins and darkness that you feel spiritually dead, that you are spiritually dead. The good news is that God will reconcile that sin, that we can confess our sins, we can start over again, that Jesus came to save us, all of us, you too. This is worthy of rejoicing. So when you see that pink candle get lit, stop, pause, and thank God that He loves you enough that He took flesh, that He came to earth, that He was born in a manger, that He went to the cross, that He gave us a church, that He gave us a priesthood, that He gave us the sacraments. Rejoice, because God wants to have an intimate relationship with you.